In this video, I'm gonna show you how to research, create, and upload printables on Etsy that will actually sell. Specifically, we'll focus on printable stickers because they're super fun and easy to create, and they're hot selling items on Etsy. Before we get started, my name is Sandra. Welcome to my channel. I help you build fun side hustles and passive income streams online. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell for more content just like this. One of the biggest struggles for new Etsy sellers is figuring out what to create that's actually going to make sales. So although we're focusing on digital stickers in this step-by-step -step tutorial, you can apply the same strategy for any digital product that you want to create for your shop. This video will be broken down into three steps that you need to take in order to guarantee that your printable stickers or any printable that you create will sell over and over again. First step is going to be the research phase. This is where we're going to validate that Etsy shoppers actually want this product before we even create it. Then we're going to create the product based on our research and we're going to use Kittle, which is an easy to use design platform that allows you to download high quality digital files for your shop. So you can sign up for free using the link down below and start testing out their features and follow along this tutorial. Then finally, I'll show you how to upload and optimize your Etsy listing so that you actually rank in Etsy search. So let's get started. There are two ways that I like to conduct my research through keywords and competitors. I have a whole video on how to do Etsy keyword research, which I will link for you down below. And I even have a class that walks you through SEO, search engine optimization, that takes you through a deep dive into keywords. I will link that below if you want to check that out. But basically I will jump onto an Etsy keyword research tool like Marmalade or Sales Samurai. And I wanna get an idea of the demand and competition for the keywords of the products I want to create. So you'll see right here that I've done some research on digital stickers and printable stickers, and I've noticed that these keywords have very high demand. The searches and engagement are high, which means that people are searching for these products and they're favoriting, they're purchasing, so that's really good for me but the competition is really high as you can see here. So I need to figure out how to reduce the competition if I'm going to get into this space. So jumping onto Etsy, I'm just going to type in one of those keyword phrases. So let's type in printable stickers and just see what comes up. So the first thing I notice is that there are over 300,000 results under this keyword, which means there are over 300,000 listings that are using this keyword. That's a lot of competition for me. The first thing I like to do is go through, like kind of like browse through the first page and just see which styles I'm gravitating more towards and maybe what type of niche that I want to get into. So I'm seeing some book lover stickers, boho inspirational quotes, some cute cat stickers. So there are a lot of great options here and clearly these shops are doing something right. They're ranking on the first page of Etsy. They're making a lot of sales and getting a lot of reviews. You can actually see the number of reviews right here. This one has over 2000 reviews, that's a lot. And I'm also paying attention to the ones that say popular now or bestseller to further validate that these are products that are currently on demand. Now, once I've narrowed down kind of what I really like, so I'm actually really liking the book lover printable stickers, I'm just going to go to the search bar and type in book lover printable stickers and see what comes up. So already I've reduced the competition by a lot. There's just over 1600 results with that. So this is really good. I have now high demand and I've lowered the competition. Next step, I wanna actually click on a bunch of these listings to get inspiration from them and to further validate that these are on demand. So for example, I'm gonna click on this one right over here and I already see that this is a bestseller. So when you hover over it, it tells you this item has had a high sales volume over the past six months. So that's really good. I'll scroll down and I can see that there's 81 reviews for this item, which means that there have been way more sales for this item because not every customer leaves a review, right? And I can even scroll down and just take a look at what people are saying. What are people loving about this item that I can take inspiration from? If there are any negative reviews, I can also try to improve on that. Another tip I want to give here is if you want to figure out what file format 
uh, that you want to offer your printables, whether it's stickers or wall art or whatever it may be, take a look at what your competitors are offering. And if you want to, you can even make a purchase just to see how they're saving their files and how they're offering them, like what format they're offering them in. Now, basically, I will just repeat this process for multiple competitors. I'll maybe take a look at about five to 10 other competitors to see what I can get inspiration from and confirm that it's a good niche for me to get into. Now that I'm happy with the idea of book lover stickers based on my keyword research, I can start creating my stickers. If you haven't done so already, you can sign up for Kittle for free using the link in the description box below. What I absolutely love about Kittle is that you're allowed to use all of their built-in graphics and fonts in the printables that you sell with no copyright issues. So if I want to create a new project for my digital stickers, I just have to go to new project on the top right here. And I can go to the standard size here or any of these sizes, or I can actually just customize the size right away. So I'm just going to do a 1200 by 900 because I'm designing more of like a horizontal sticker. So let's go ahead and click create. Now on the left hand side, you'll notice all of the tools that you can use. So under text, I can easily add in some quotes for my stickers under projects. These are all the projects that I've actually already worked on in Kittle. Elements will show all of the graphics that you are allowed to use in your printables. They break it down into these sections. So feel free to browse through all of these categories to see what's available for you. And then if you actually want to upload your own graphics that you have, you can go right to uploads and go to upload media, and then you can use graphics that you also own as well. I'm gonna start with the elements feature. So I want to look for some books. I'm gonna search books in the search bar here just to see what graphics Kittle already has. Now I'm already seeing a lot of really, really cute graphics here that I'm probably gonna use in quite a few of my stickers. So I'm just actually going to select this one here and I'm just going to drag it, make it a little bit larger. Then on the right side, you'll see the object settings. This is where I can change the color. So I'm just going to select the blue one here and maybe make it like a cute pink color. So I'm just going to drag this over. So that's cute. Then I'm gonna change the pages to a white and let's change the outline to a black. That looks good. I'm gonna add an outline as well, like a white outline that allows people to either print and cut on their Cricut and sticker paper from their home. So I'm gonna go to border weight and just increase the outline here. So you'll see that gray border. So let's go ahead and increase it to maybe that size. And I want it to be white. So let's select this gray, change it to a white. I'll change the background color so that I can actually see the outline as I work. Doesn't really matter what color we change it to. So let's just select any color here. All right, let's add some text now. So let's go to text, add headline, and then I'm just gonna start typing in my quote here. I can edit the text by looking at the text settings on the right side here. I can change the font. So I'm going to select kind of like more of a fun font. Um, this one really pops out to me, luckiest guy. I think that's really cute. And I'll just change the size. So let's make it a little larger. I can either change it here or I can just drag the text if I want to. Now I'm going to copy and paste because I want my text in different lines. So let's go ahead and do that. To add some interest to my text, I'm going to add kind of like a wave to each line. So if I select this line here, under transformation, I'm going to select rise. Now what's really cool is that all of these nodes appear that I can actually adjust myself. That's another really cool thing about Kittle. They have a lot of advanced editing tools that are really easy to use and they just take your printables to another level. They just make them super unique to your competitors. Now I'm just going to flip this over. So under rise curve, I'm just going to change that over and then I'll do the exact same thing to the rest. If I want to edit the first line, I'll just select it and then click on edit transform and then the nodes appear for me again here. Okay, I'll play with that a little bit more later on, but for now I want to change the color of my text and then also add that white outline as well. So I'm going to go to text color and then select kind of like a pink or like 
reddish color. Okay, I love that. So now let's add the border around. So let's go to effects here and I'm going to select the third one and then I'm gonna play with the offset angle and outline width. To change it to white under block shadow, let's go to color and make that white. And then I'm just going to repeat this process for the rest of the text. I think that looks good. I went in and played around with the transformations again. Now you'll notice that I have a lot of gaps in between my layers. So in order to fill those gaps in, I'm gonna go to elements, select the rectangle here, and then I'm just gonna make it white. I'll send it to the back. So right click and send to the back. You can also play around with all of these layers by clicking on layers on the bottom right here, and you can drag them up and down if you want. I just like to send to back or bring forward, but there's different ways to do it. So that looks pretty good for now. I'm just going to add in a couple of flowers. So back to elements, um, I'm gonna type in daisy. I can also search flower or something like that. And then I'll just see which ones I feel would fit within this sticker design. I really like this one. I'm going to select that. And I like the blue in the middle. So I'm actually going to make the petals blue. I'm gonna select the pink, change it to a blue. Let's select the middle and let's make it the same color as the text to bring that in. I'll just copy and paste that and put a flower here as well. Now I want to add in that white outline on the back as well, but I don't want the white outline to conflict with my text. So I'm actually going to copy and paste this flower. Then I'm gonna to go to border weight and increase the border weight here, change that to a white, and then I'm going to line it up with a flower and I'm going to send it to the back. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one here. So let's copy and paste it. So you can see what it would look like if I just left it at the front. It's kind of like blocking some of the text and that's why I wanna send it to the back. All right, I went in and filled in a couple of more of these gaps with just some white rectangles. And now I think it looks really, really good. I'm gonna go ahead and download this sticker right over here on the top right. What's great about Kittle is you have DPI control, so you can increase the quality of your digital file. In order to increase the DPI, you will need the pro account. So once again, download the free version, play around with the features. Once you're ready to download these and sell them online, I would recommend upgrading to the pro version. Version. So I would change this to, let's say 300 DPI. And when I purchased a couple of sticker bundles on Etsy, I noticed that a lot of sellers are offering them in separate PNG files. So each sticker would be a separate PNG file the way I'm creating it here. Then I'm gonna select remove background and I will select PNG. I would pretty much repeat that process for all of the other sticker designs that I've done. So I did this one as well, and I'm probably going to create maybe 25 to 30 different stickers. They're really, really quick to create, especially if you are using Kittle's graphics and fonts. So I've already downloaded this one as well, and I'm going to show you how to upload these onto Etsy properly. But first, I wanna show you how to create the Etsy listing images. So if you go back to Etsy and take a look at all of the listings that you did research on, like I mentioned, you want to take inspiration from all of these images, right? Be very clear on what the customer is getting. Make your images look really pretty with mock-ups, stock images, um, or take photos of yourself if you'd like. So I'm actually going to show you how to create an image with your stickers on Kittle. Let's go back to new project. And this time I'll select the standard size. We'll create that. Under uploads, I've already actually uploaded an image from Pexels. So it's right over here. I'm just going to select it. Pexels is a website where you can get free stock images. So they have a lot of these. I'm just going to drag this a little bit. Basically what I want to do is place one of the stickers on the laptop here because I want to show how people can use it. I've also uploaded the PNG files that I created for my stickers. So they're right over here as you can see. And I'm just going to put my sticker right here. Let's just rotate that. That looks really, really cute on the laptop. And then I'm just going to select this one and then just put it right over here as if it's like just sitting on the desk or something like that. And let's add in some text to make it clear what this is. So this is the image I finished up with. I just added text that says 30 PNG sticker designs and I'm making it clear that it's a digital download. Then I would just download this image as a JPEG file that I will then use in my Etsy shop. If you're wondering which Kittle subscription is right for you, you can go ahead and take a look at the pricing and see the differences between all of them. I recommend the pro version and if you do 
do go for the pro version, make sure you select bill yearly because you do get a discount. If I go to bill monthly, it's $15 a month but under yearly, it's actually $10 a month. This will allow you to download high quality digital downloads for your shop. And if you're questioning anything about the licenses, if you go into resources right over here, go into licensing, they lay it out so clear on what you are allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. So like I mentioned, you're allowed to use all of their fonts and graphics within your digital downloads. It lays it all out for you here. So I want to show you how I tend to save all of my files when I go to upload my Etsy listings because I know it can get kind of confusing. So for each Etsy listing, I will have a folder created for it where I have all my listing images and then the actual files for the customers. So this is the folder I'm in it right now. I'll have one folder that's called listing images. So if I go into here, you'll see the one image that I've created already. And then of course I would create at least six or seven images ideally. And then these are the two stickers that I've created so far. But like I mentioned, I would probably offer 25 to 30 stickers or something like that because I noticed a lot of other sellers are offering about that many. Now Etsy only allows you to upload up to five files. So obviously I can't upload all 30. What I'm going to do is create a zipped folder. So I'm just going to right click new folder and then let's just call it book lover digital stickers PNG or something like that. It doesn't really matter. Then I'm going to drag these two into that folder, right click and then hit compress. Now this is my zipped folder that I'm actually going to upload in my listing. You're going to see that in the next phase, but I just wanted to show you how I zip my folders. And I also want to answer a question I get a lot. What happens if your files are larger than 20 megabytes? There's a couple of things here. So if you're going to offer like 25 to 30 stickers, it's probably going to be over 20 megabytes. You can split those up. So let's say 15 stickers are less than 20 megabytes altogether. You can put that in one zip folder and then the other 15 can go in the second zip folder. It's just that each file has to be less than 20. Now let's pretend that doesn't even work. Maybe your files are just too large. You can offer a Dropbox link. So I've actually created an example right over here for you. This is a PDF file. I created this PDF file in Kittle and you can screenshot this just to kind of get an idea of how I created this. But basically if my files are just too large, then I would upload this PDF file into my Etsy listing. So when a customer purchases, they're going to receive this file with a clickable link. I added the actual URL in PDF escape, but basically pretend I'm the customer. I've received this PDF file after I purchased this listing. I will click on this Dropbox link and now I'm brought to this folder that has all of my stickers. Again, right now I only have two stickers, but pretend there's way more in here, but they can now download my stickers just from this Dropbox link. Don't mind the lighting. It's literally getting dark outside. And for now, I'm just using my window as lighting. Anyways, moving on. Phase three, which is uploading and optimizing your Etsy listing. Under shop manager, when you go into listings, you'll notice a button on the top right. Just go to add listing. And the first thing you're going to do is upload the images that you have created. So you'll notice here, I've already uploaded that image that I created in Kittle. It's right over here. And like I mentioned, I would create a few more and add them into here for more more information and how else you can use these stickers. You can adjust the thumbnail to zoom in a little bit more on one of the stickers or a couple of the stickers, however you want them to show up. Under title, I did a lot of keyword research within Marmalade, within my competitors. Like I mentioned, I have a video that talks about Etsy keyword research and I have a class on SEO. You can check both of them out down below. I like to fill in most of the characters of the title, as you can see here. And I like to make them more descriptive, long tail keywords. You can see here, I've kind of grouped a few together to make them more specific. This is the category I chose for my stickers. Then you can choose the attributes for your sticker, depending on what you have created. Just make sure under type, you are selecting digital. Now under description, I've just written in right now, digital stickers description, because I don't have a full description, but if you do want tips on how to write out a really good Etsy listing description, I have a whole video that walks you through that step-by-step. Step. And I recommend taking a look at your competitors to see how they've broken down their description, take inspiration from what they are saying and try to improve on it if you can. For 
for tags, make sure to fill in all 13 tags. I've put in three in here for now, but within my Etsy keywords video, I walk you through more on how to fill out your tags. Just make sure you are utilizing these entirely because Etsy is a search engine. The more relevant your keywords are, the more chances you have at ranking on the first page of Etsy. I put in $5.50 under price for now, based on competitor research that I've done. Usually you wanna look at maybe 10 to 20 competitors, see what they're charging and try not to charge too low or too high go somewhere in the middle. Now under digital files, like I mentioned, I create a zip folder because I can only upload up to five files. You can see here, add up to four more files because I've only got one. So that's the zip folder that has all of my stickers in there. Like I mentioned, if your files are too large, you can upload that PDF, a similar PDF to the one that I created with a Dropbox link for the customer. Then you're ready to go. Just hit publish on the bottom right here. Make sure to sign up for Kittle for free using the link in the description box below to start playing around with their features. Once you're ready to download and sell your products, I recommend upgrading to the pro version so that your digital files are downloaded in high resolution. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and you can head over to this video next where I show you how to create printable wall art using Kittle. So I'll see you there.